hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending our uh, what every JDE one developer has been seeking, an automatic technical documentation tool presentation. I am Dave Taylor. Uh, I work for CNA Technologies. Um, I actually wrote this tool, so you're getting from the horse's mouth, as uh, as it were. I'm Dave Taylor. I've had 20, over 25 years of professional development experience, over 20 years of J.D. Edwards experience in E1 um, and, and world as well, um, and, you know, over 30 years of development experience just for fun, you know, think of things and, and make them. So what we're going to talk about today is a part of our utility toolkit, the JDE self-documentation tool, right? Um, our CAT consultants have, you know, the same needs over and over again. Uh, so we decided, you know, let's build stuff for our team, right? For our technical functional team and also, you know, our technical team in this case. And, you know, found that there's a need in the marketplace. So let's let's put it out there for other people to use. Documentation tool, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, in general, the whole entire toolkit set that we have, you know, we can rapidly compare proxy options, UDCs, menus, all these things on the side here, right? You can read that list, pretty cool. We also have our cat object analyzer um, that allows us to, you know, uh, zero in on our estimates for uh, um, you know, implementations, but also allows you as a, you know, customer to use the tool to say, all right, what's the state of our system now, you know? And then there's also the log file parser, which is uh, really, you know, focused more for developers, trims the logs down to just necessary statements. You know, you can limit data, you can get uh, timings for business function calls for uh, performance examination and all that kind of stuff. So what we're talking about today is the self-documentation tool, one of our comparison, our toolkit tools, uh, the product architectures built uh, as a Java application. So you can run it on any desktop platform, doesn't have to be a JD Edwards developer client, just so long as it's connected to uh, your network and can see this, the uh, JD Edwards servers, it will work. Um, it's deployed as an executable, right? So you're like Java, oh, do I have to have all this stuff? Well, it's built as an executable native to each environment. So you can run it on Windows, you can run it on Linux, run it on Mac, all those things. And also, uh, you know, it's a useful tool for business analysts and, uh, and technical, uh, technical writers, developers, all those, all those types of people on your team. So, why is it important to document your system? Well, you know, everyone's had the, the audit, right? Oh, do you have documentation for this? No. All right, well, we better run out and get some, right? Uh, reduces reliance on tribal knowledge, right? So someone has, you know, inherent knowledge of these programs, but someone else needs to come in and help you out, you know, you can have this documentation ready for you to, to rock and roll. Right, easy access to review your modifications. Right, let's what, how is it written? Uh, where are our modifications in this program? Right, and you know, use it in design sessions. Uh, I know I do. It's like, oh, all right, uh, these are the tables that are being being used. Let me run documentation over your system to you know see what tables, you know, what changes you've made to the tables, what indexes, and I have it up while I'm doing my designs. No, so who who develop who can benefit from this tool? Well, that's a whole lot of people, right? The development team for sure, right? Business analysts can look at these designs, validate, you know, oh yeah, I, I uh, that's what I said it was going to do, right? Use external resources, people coming in to help out. You can hand them this documentation to speed knowledge transfer, right? And then IT management for you know again audit purposes and say yes. We have technical documentation for our uh, for our products in, in our in our system. <clears throat> so, features for our documentation tool. You know why the thought process behind it, right? Is 
one, let's let's make it a tool rather than having someone go in and you know make sure all the documentation is updated, right? I have to go through and read all the specs, read the document, compare side by side, right? Make the tool quick, right? We don't want this to be a long process. Otherwise, you know, if it was going to be a long process, might as well do it by hand, right? Make it templated for all objects, right? That's every everything will look the same so every program right each each person has their own flavor of writing and style and you may have a standard document but someone may not pull it with this tool all your documents look the same so you know what to expect when you're looking at each of them make it usable by all right it's a tool that's easy to use it can be put anywhere on your system i set up my configurations click my buttons run <clears throat> right you, you can use this to create a central repository of data, right? You have, you know, various file shares. You're going to put all your stuff, generate your documentation and move it to those locations. Keep your stuff all together. And, you know, keep your documentation evergreen, right? Always, always current, you know, run it periodically because, <clears throat> pardon me, because, you know, everyone's everyone speaking as a developer, every developer, you know, Updates their technical documentation every time a user makes a request, especially when you're firefighting, right? Ha ha ha. So this keeps your documentation up to date and current. So the tool itself, right? No installations, just an executable. Copy it on your system. Run it, right? Again, make it quick. It runs quickly. Um, templated, again. All the documents look similar, right? The table designs, every single table design that you get will look like all the other table designs. And then all the other templates look similar to each other, so you know what to expect. You know, it gives these developers a way to kind of get pseudo code out, right? So it dumps out event rules in a pseudo code looking fashion. And the output comes in, uh, you know, Office product format. So, you know, pretty much everyone uses Office. So you can open it up, and you can even open up the docx formats in LibreOffice if you are one of those people, which I may happen to be. I will. We will neither confirm nor deny. So, product features in this documentation tool, right? This is the uh, the very scary looking, maybe. No, it's not scary looking. It's the connection setting screen, right? This is how we define how we're connecting to the system, right? We just need to know your servers and information that you can get from your CNC team, right? Hey, CNC, how do I connect to these things, right? Give me this information, enter the information, and then you're off to the races, right? You can just continue generating. Once you get your connections set up the first time, you just regenerate your documentation, regenerate your documentation. You don't have to do this every single time. So in terms of samples, let me show those. So we've got a table, right? Everyone's favorite table, the address book, FO 101. Gives you the table prefix. Gives you the Indexes first, right? All the indexes that you have, right? Is it primary? Is it unique? And the name that's described in JD Edwards, what columns are available to it? So these are all the indexes on the FO101. It's a whole lot. And then you get to the table columns. It gives you the sequence, the alias, its description, what type it is, its size, and if there's display decimals. So this is your documentation layout for the address book table, right? Everyone knows that one. And then this is on the right-hand side is the address book application, or <clears throat> pardon me, yes, the address book application. And it gives you the list of forms that are in that application, right? The form names, what type they are, what's their title, do they have a business view over them, right? Is it an entry point? And then each of these forms gets its own breakout and definition, right? Are there parameters? 
What are the form controls? Right, we have all these form controls. So each of these each of these forms gets your form interconnect form controls. So as we scroll down, a lot of these didn't have these are just you know straight vanilla forms, no event rules. They just do what the application uh, tells it to do with the automatic processing cycle. But something like work with addresses is going to have some logic, right? Here's your form interconnects. These are all the form controls on it, right? You've got check boxes and search type edit fields static fields, group boxes, and then there's a grid. And here's all the grid columns. And then the magic piece is, here's all the event rules, right? So dialogue is initialized. This is the logic for this program. Post dialogue is initialized. And then you've got grid record fetched. And then you have all your variables. There's grid event rules, right? So I won't, Keep going on all of that. But basically, um, that's the documentation. It all looks similar to that, right? The business views will have a similar look and feel. The applications, the UBEs all look similar, you know, and our use cases are pretty clear, right? Audit confirmation, uh, implementations when you're done, right? Everyone knows after go live, you know, there's been a lot of changes that had to get rushed and didn't get documented. Run this right after that go live and you've got current up-to-date technical doc documentation right there. You upgrades and retrofits. Before you run an upgrade or a retrofit, bring up your bring up the current documentation, run it out, and then you can use it for you know retrofitting code back into the system. You know, keep your documentation evergreen. And then you've got your as of reporting in this case, right? So, um, you know, what is the state of my system right now? I have all these new mods or I have these old mods that I don't know. You know, what's, what is our as of state? Let's take a look at it. So that, folks, is the automatic technical documentation tool, um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, I definitely say contact Jeff, right? That's that's key. Go for it. Because um, one, that's not my mailbox. So <laughs> the, the more messages you send asking questions, the better. No, I'm just kidding. But not really. Um, so uh, let me see. I got some question and answer here. Uh, are BI publisher objects included? So um, at the moment, it is not. Uh, BI publisher objects are not included yet. Right. So right now this is rolled out for applications, data structures, UBEs, process option templates, business use tables. Um, we're still still building out other pieces. Right. This is our our uh, release, our first you know, production release. And we're going to get into the other pieces soon. So uh, BI publisher objects will be included at some point. Um, just. They are not there right this minute. All right, that's a good question. Very good question. Um, anything, any other questions out there? Well, um, I think is there a way to interact more? I guess maybe not. I think, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so, um, any more questions? The tool is uh, very handy, big fan. Um, obviously, you know, not just because I wrote it, but I do use it a lot. Um, you know, I just used it for a retrofit product project. So, um, yeah. Any other questions? Ah, okay. All right, so question. 
is uh, how does this product connect to JDE? So that's a good question. This one connects to JDE uh, directly to the database with JDBC, right? Java Database Connectivity. So um, you create a read-only connection. Your CNC team helps you set that up. And from there, you just uh, type in the connection string information that is given to you by your CNC team. And uh, it reads the data that way. Let's see. Um, let's see. Question showing up in chat. Okay. So is toolkit all or none? Um, so the question toolkit all or none? So uh, you can buy pieces and components, or you can buy them bundled. Um, that would be a question for Josh Marcus, our uh, marketing and sales expert. Um, don't think we have his info, but I'll put Jeff's back up so that you can, you know, contact Jeff as well. <clears throat> so yes, the the toolkit is built up of a number of components that you can buy individually or bundled together. So I hope that answers your question, Mohammed. Um, there are questions in the chat session. Oh, there's chat. Okay, there we go. There we go. Hey, look at that. I see that now. Okay. Um, so BSSVs. So uh, are BSSVs coming later too? Yes. So BSSVs. So BSSVs and business functions um, are uh, going to be kind of tricky in the fact that you know things like C code. You know, we will definitely dump the the Java code for BSSVs and C code. Um, so it won't look as pretty, but we're still going to get there. Um, thank you for that question. Uh, how do you tell which objects to document? So in the tool, um, there's a, uh, a process that allows you to either select a group of objects, right? You type in the object name. You can type in a OMW project. It'll... Uh, It'll pick up the pick up the objects in a particular project, or you can type in names individually. And basically, you create a, you know, I guess we'll call it a report, a documentation bundle, so that you can rerun the same one over and over again. Um, you can copy them, create a new one, and bring it up. Um, so you tell the objects in the application. You can create a, a set, which actually. While I'm thinking, maybe I can find our documentation for that. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, BI Publisher Objects Included, we went over that one. Um, <clears throat> and so as I'm looking for, I'm going to look up for, pull up our documentation for that so I can show you a couple more screenshots since we have the time. Um, but we also have, you know, a lot of other toolkit options, you know, the processing option comparison, data, sol data selection comparison toolkit, those, those work for, you know, application versions, UDC comparison toolkit. There's a number of tools that are all bundled together in our toolkit. So here's our documentation. Let me look at the question and answer. Um, let's see. Uh, where does this reside in a separate server within JD somehow? So this is a separate application. It's uh, built to be on a standalone machine. So uh, your PC would have it on, you know, on your local machine. It doesn't have to be a development client. It doesn't have to be installed in the servers. Um, so you can just run it from your machine and it connects directly as a you know, client server type application. Um, the license is by site, um, and that's, again, a discussion that you can have with um, uh, Josh Marcus. All right, so in the toolkit, there is 
three windows. This is the main application screen. You have a connections definition, a uh, a reporting documentation set, and then a runtime. Like this is how often you've run it, where you've run it, when you ran it. So the important key piece. Do, 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 do. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep that thing on scrolling. And here we go. Let's see if I can. Ooh. Did I? Nope. Trying to zoom in and I didn't do that. <laughs> I apologize. So let me go back to the chat for a second. Just make sure I haven't missed anybody's questions. Um, <clears throat> for costs, we'll need to talk to Josh. Uh, he's the the holder of the keys on that one. All right, so if you can see my screen here, the right hand panel. No, multiple pages. So this right hand panel here. This is where you would select your objects. So you can enter in an object name. You can do a pattern with parentheses, right? So if you want everything that is, you know, P55, do P55 parentheses, and it adds everything with the P55. Um, you can enter in an ad, you know, OMW project, click the add button, and it generates this list of objects. And once you've generated the list of objects, it then creates the report dumping all the object types documentation out. So when I ran the address book, I had, you know, F00, F0101 and P0102 in this list, saved it, clicked the run button, ran it. And I can keep running it repeatedly for that list. So that is the, uh, let's see, so that, so this process ran 10 for this example in our documentation. Uh, ran, you know, 10, generated 10 objects documentation in four seconds. So it's, it's pretty speedy, uh, which is nice. You know, you don't want to wait a day and a half, which is still faster than a tech person trying to write it. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> it's a nice, Nice tool, I like using it a lot. Um, so that's the documentation. Uh, da, da, da. Any demo? So that's for Josh. Uh, Josh Aubrey, question for any demo period to check out the toolkit. Um, so I would say reach out to Josh, Jeff, or Aubrey for any demos to check out the toolkit. Um, you know, as mentioned, this is our toolkit set. So we have proxy options, UDCs, menus, data dictionaries, data selection, a database analyzer, and the documentation tool, plus the object analyzer, log file parser. Say contact Josh Marcus for any other questions. That's josh.marcus at catechnology.com. And I guess, uh, thank you everyone for your time. Appreciate it. Um, it's a pleasure presenting to you in this uh, strange and new world that we have. I appreciate all of your time. You know, we look forward to hearing from you about the documentation tool and our others. Thank you.